Welcome to the map Westfold in BFME 1 on the page 2.22 for a replay cast between good and evil. The best matchup in the game, the most fun to watch and hopefully you guys will enjoy. We have the red Isengard player expelled versus the purple Gondor player the wizard. I mean obviously that's a username, I think he's pre-picking the Gondor faction. And that's a possibility you can pick whatever faction you want in the arena. And also you can join the online by downloading the all-in-one launcher from the description down below. Okay, so we have the soldiers being splitted, going one to the uh, right, one to the left. And the Isengard player opening with a Uruk pit. So the plan is to uh, basically outspam the entire Gondor with Uruks early on and later on with the pikemen. And Alvin Wood will, Alvin Wood will be placed there on this spot. And the Uruks can't fight this because on this land they have no leadership. But in the meantime, good choice from Aizen to take down this side, which is quite safe. And one Uruk is gonna already make it to the spot. And Gondor might already lose one of his starting farms at the beginning of the game as the Hobbit is moving to the top side. So Westfold definitely offers a lot of possibilities for the evil faction. You have like, you know, limitless amount of resources possibility with plenty of uh, lumber mills you can build on pretty much the entire map. And Gondor can also get a lot of money. So money is not an issue on this map. Uh, micro is very important, but on a big map like this, macro is even more important. So you need to physically take care of every settlement over and over again. And Isengard will have an easier way to do that by just spamming pikemen. However, Gondor can counter this by getting some soldiers upon the field. And we might hopefully be able to see a lot of unit diversity in this matchup. Like for example, Vorks, pikemen... Berserker, Uruk Pikeman combination, a lot of possibilities, but take a look into the minimap, please. We have one, two, three, four, uh, five settlements for Aizen. He will grow so incredible rich. He has already a level two Uruk pit, just like that. The stable has been built up. The Knight of Gondor will be there very, very soon upon the field. In the meantime, he was able to destroy this settlement and now leading forward to this settlement over there with the Uruks. And the soldiers are rotating. For the defense, I think they will take care of this settlement first. And Aizen already creeping with the Uruk spam he has. So spamming Uruks like crazy, creeping the entire map. And his pikemen will be ready just in time to counter the first Knight of Gondor. That's an amazing opening for Aizen. He hasn't lost anything because of his great choice of picking the right settlements, which he knew he can protect much easier. When you rush forward to the settlement and grab this one, the possibility to keep this one protected is going to be most likely super low. That's why you always pick the settlements you know that are far away from your opponent, and he will have to put in big efforts to ever reach the settlement at the beginning of the game. The knights are coming. Building this and cancelling this is always going to buy you some time. You have even lords upon the field. Early Lourdes investment always pays off because it will be much easier for you to get him to level 5. He will take down the creep here. If he takes the creep down entirely, troll and the lair, he will already hit level 3. That's uh, going to unlock the carnage, which will give him some self-peel and self-defense. And he can play a bit more risky. And Vorten has been used on this pikeman, and, but the Knights of Gondor will take the creep and one part of the money. That's pretty good for Gondor. He's also creeping the top side in the meantime. Uh, Hobbit can't do much and the soldiers are still remaining. That's actually pretty good that the soldiers are still alive. The knights have to disengage. They need to go back to the base. Otherwise, they will go down. So Gondor filling up the base. He has now in total three knights upon the field. That will give him the chance to get the shields. Uh, but first of all, you want to always get the forge blades. Shields not that important against uh, Aizen, especially not early game. Uh, forge blades will give you the chance to burst down the structures a bit faster. So instead of fighting the pikemen, what you want to do is get blades and then you can destroy the settlements with the forge blades in a second and you basically destroy, keep moving, destroy, keep moving. Then you can buy heavy armor and then shields and then you can even fight the pikemen when they have no upgrades or war chant. But he's gonna creep at least the top side for now. This creep also will be taken by Gondor. Aizen has a phenomenal amount of resources going for the war pit next just to have some mobile units up on the field. Also, Sharku could be a possible option to keep permanently chasing down. Um, oh, Pippin! Pippin is dead. To keep permanently chasing down the enemy knights. No barracks here for Gondor. If he loses the 
Swartman, he will be done. So he's sending them back to the base. What you can always do is give them Forge Blades and Heavy Armor too. This way they can fight also against Berserker. But remember, you will have to deal very, very soon with some uh, Vorks. And Vorks will counter your Swartman. Even when they have upgrades, they will have a hard time because they can keep trampling down your soldiers over and over again. And your damage is meaningless if you never get the chance to hit them. We've also Boromir upon the field. That's a great choice for the lead game. But there is already a Lourdes and it might be a deja vu from the films. If Lourdes gets close to Boromir, he will cripple him. And with the Carnage, you can easily take him down as Lourdes is one of the greatest counters to Boromir. Because of the Carnage, giving him also knockback resistance, the passive from Boromir is meaningless. While the ability from Lourdes, the Carnage, is active. So Gondor is still a decent amount of farms outside, getting good amount of money. Uh, going for heavy armor first and also shields have been purchased so we might see a very very soon uh, base rush with the shields however again the same situation you need to forge blades to burst down the structures faster otherwise it will just take too much time lords almost level four and in the beginning of the game players both of them focus more on on the map control every creep from the map westfold has been taken away and I think most of them are taken by Isengard, who had a phenomenal start, playing a very clean game and don't give, doesn't give Gondor any room uh, to snowball, you know? And Gondor also a faction, just like Isengard, it requires a lot of gold, a, a lot of resources, a Warks, Pikeman combination, very difficult to be dealt with. The only solid combination to deal with this is going to be your Tower Guard Soldier combination, which also Isengard can counter with his own Uruk Pikeman combination, by the way. He has plenty of Pikeman. So in this matchup, you can always spam Pikeman. He has 1,800, almost 400 out of 500 available command points. Going for the Armory next. We already purchased Heavy Armor, Blades, and Banner. Going for the Fyros just for the, for the safety. The Knights have to be careful. They are level 3 though. Boromir is always on the opposite side of the map making a good job you know dodging lords boromir's speed is equal with lords so if you see lords and you keep running he can't catch up to you unless he uses palantir on lords it will give him the speed boost and then he will catch up to you and if you if he gets a chance to cripple you you will most likely die even through heal carnage is just too powerful but he's being idle in the middle of the map, not doing much. There is one single uh, Uruk. You can always give him banner and he can respawn. And Boromir is level 3.5. And, and also making a good job that he will not give any experience to Boromir. That's pretty good. I like it. We have 3000 in the bank for Gondor. And he only placed, I believe, two lanes. And one of them already has already been covered in the middle of the map. So there is only one Elven Wood from Gondor and one Tinted Land from Aizen. Now they will hold on it because they know when whoever uses it first will have, uh, you know, the, the, the danger that it will immediately get covered. And you don't want to have too many battlegrounds from your opponent, but he is stronger and you are much weaker. So now Aizen will have the Lourdes almost level 4, getting very close to the leadership and going for the siege immediately. And that's something i want you to pay attention to that's how you should play aizen against gondor you don't want to give your opponent too much chance you go for the structure as soon as you potentially can and bring the fight to them if you don't do this gondor will have the chance to ride out all game long and you know fight go back to well heal up and farm power points in the late game super late game gondor has countless amount of summons and it will get harder and harder for any faction to deal with this so what you want to do is you want to bring them, bring the fight to them. So he is the one who needs to defend and you are the one who gets the chance to attack. Because most of the time, damage or offense is the best defense. Nice catch here, Boromir gets level 4. That's a huge thing for Gondor, by the way. It might even force Aizen to pick the rain over the Field of Fires. Um, the Field of Fires, of course, on a map like this will make you pretty much like... You will get um, Iron Man of Marvels in terms of economy. You will be billionaire, you know, on a map like this. But you might not even need it because you have a lot of money anyway. So Freezing Rain, if you have to deal with double leadership Gondor, Ganav and Boromir, it's already pretty scary because Gondor can get later on also make his own combos. And Pikeman everywhere, on every possible spot. And the Vorks are also doing a good job. And now he's building up an army because he want to start sieging with the Rams. 
Gandalf has been recruited and he's gonna go immediately for the workshop knowing that he needs the defense as soon as possible he's realizing okay i am not controlling this map so i need my gandalf to ride around farm power points for me and in the worst case situation in the worst case scenario when i will get attacked i need to be ready so my base is in a safe and fine spot we will have also potentially very soon saruman he's towering up at the outpost and no base rush happened so far and all of those furnaces are all about hit level 3 that's going to increase the self defense of the isengard castle also big time not many towers so that's risky just build every single tower for the just like better safe than sorry you know if level 5 uh, knights of condor they are pretty powerful too and the ram ballista combination two rams and that should break the walls of condor super super fast so Gandalf, of course, is the one we, need, we are counting for. Uh, the wizard has to pay off the 6,000 investment, including the two power point investment, has to make stuff happen for Gondor. He needs the power points like Grey Company, he needs the power points like the Eagles, and he needs them very, very fast. One trebuchet upon the field, that's gonna disable the effect of the rams, um, because the rams will get two-shotted by the catapult. However, there is a ballista, and the part of the wall will be broken right now. And the Knight of Gondor will have to get in safety. Now the Vorks have to just rotate to this two trebuchet and take them down. Uh, in the meantime, Gandalf was able to get three. Boom! But Isengard is paying attention, just dodging in the last possible second. Uh, Lourdes, I don't know where Lourdes is. Did Lourdes die? No, Lourdes is actually not in position to punish Gandalf for this, what he just did. And there's two traps and the knights with bottom leadership actually did a good job and that will kind of stall the game out a little bit and lords i think he missed the cripple okay that's what it is he missed the cripple and then he put him potentially inside the tower to not lose him beautiful one more time getting a lot of experience on gandalf and his borrow even got level six out of that that's amazing it might even force isengard to get uh, palantir uh, usage in order to cancel the fear of the horn of gondor because the worst combo you want to face against is the horn of gondor stun into the blast of gandalf that's going to be just too damn powerful uh, you need either the palantir or the saruman who needs to be around the army to give them resistances to fear and that might be the first base rush but isengard is being prepared for this he's towering up however he has zero units inside the castle that's super greedy if two or three knights come with gandalf leadership they can laugh about this damage from the towers they won't even hurt them uh, shields heavy armor plus the armor leadership from gandalf 50 percent will make the knights ultra tanky in this situation what you want to do is always aim on the guy who you can actually damage more uh, don't try to kill the knights always go on gandalf the Uruk Pit level 3 is gonna go down. That's a major and massive success for Gondor. Aizen has to make sure to demolish the structures in time. If he doesn't, this knight will get easily level 10. Gandalf offers also 50% more combat experience, uh, helping the knights to level up way, way faster. Uh, Lourdes, smart move, running through this area to catch up Gandalf, but Gondor is paying attention to this. There comes the fireball, but they were out of range and it won't connect. Now the outpost is exposed and Gondor can do what he's the best at. Use mobility with his Gandalf and now take down the siege works to slow down the progressing of Isengard even further. And in the meantime, Gondor will just keep ditching out more and more traps. He has also Firestorm purchased. He can always repair... Um, beautiful and the siege works will be taken down again that's gonna slow down the progress but don't lose the level seven this lord should just eat oh my god oh he's gonna shoot it and it's gonna go down and he's getting level four out of that too amazing 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 did he have heal i would have healed this level seven by the way it's not like he has plenty of knights off on the field a uh, barracks will be demolished and uh, Faramir has not been recruited. Boromir, the de defender of the White Tree, staying in the castle to protect the catapults against potential Vork invade. And the Knight level 7, though, unfortunately, has been taken down. The Eco from Gondor is not looking too shabby because he's not doing much with it. He uh, didn't recruit many more Knights. Uh, he, can re he could repair. No, he can't. It's 2,500 you need to invest for the repair of the broken part of the wall. Uh, increasing the prices for the repairing... Of the walls is to just kind of um, make the camping strategy a little bit weaker 
Ooh, beautiful catch with the Knights. Six power points in the bank. Seven will lead you to the Cloud Break. But I think what you need in this matchup over Cloud Break is the Eagle Summon. Cloud Break, of course, is not, should not be underestimated. The damage and also uh, the armor and the speed reduction is definitely something you should not, you know, underestimate. But in order to even do something about this army, you need to first of all take care of this Lurz. And for that, Eagles can do a phenomenal job. Because your Ganov can be, can't be enabled as long as the Lords is remaining around the army from Aizen, which is looking ultra scary to me. We have Saruman leadership for more armor, 40% more armor. And we have also the War Chant that will make them quite beefy and tanky. Condor has to a double outpost, so that's pretty good. Getting some money from the top side of the map as the siege will begin one more time. He went for the Feel the fires, as you can see, the glow animation on the on the Lumber Mills. And that's going to enable the Isengard the richness. He will be super rich. And it will be meaningless to lose your army or to kill the army because he will be able to bring new army over and over again. In order to counter this, what you could do is you have also border leadership with your uh, Saruman. So you make combos in the front and you have traps in the behind and you can start winning the fight. But there comes the first big base rush. We have three Knights of Gondor. Mentioned before, they have also Gandalf Armor leadership. And there comes the Grey Company for potential pikemen as they are coming from the behind. And this piece will receive crazy amount of damage. And Isengard might do the same. Might go in, but he's playing it slow as uh, traps are defending the base. Uh, heal is coming. But he went too much in the base, uh, receiving damage from all the shooting structures and losing the knights in exchange. The Great Company did a good job. He lost one knight of Gondor, two of them are remaining, but still good amount of damage dealt. Destroying this highly leveled stuff, always great. The Vorex will get the chance to commit to the outpost at the top side, top right side. And the traps are doing a good job farming power points for Gondor. Two power points after the field of fires. A beautiful shot one more time. They don't get one shot though. They have armor leadership plus the war chant. Keep that in mind. And the pikemen will be sent in. Here you can use the horn of Gondor to stun them. But he's building up more and more defense on top of the wall. This uh, war chant has been taken down. Ganath is returning to the base. And Isengard doesn't want to overcommit for a potential mistake which could easily backfire and cost him the attack and he will basically give your opponent when you lose this fight here when you lose everything including your Saruman and Lourdes uh, Gondor will get the chance to clean up the whole map you will lose both your outposts and then you will have to start from the from the scratch again you know so you you don't want to commit or over commit and go in the base but you don't know you don't see the base you have um, fog of war here you don't know how many catapults he has uh, did he cripple Boromir? No, he didn't cripple Boromir. The knights will be able to sneak in and destroy two of the Ballista. And that's going to even also give him power points. Now we have six power points in total. That's going to be most likely invested into the Eagle Summon. Lourdes is not level 5 yet. The Burst is not there for the Isengard army. And when you play around the cooldown of the Warchant, for example, right now, in which the army doesn't have the damage boost and you get the chance to kill the Lords with your Eagles, your Gandalf can farm you so many power points. So you basically can kill also Saruman. Don't lose this. Nah, he's going to go back to well and he's going to be perfectly safe. Outpost remaining. And Gondor has not much upon the field though. Oh, he stole the Knights of Gondor with the warm, warm Tongue. He has enough of the destruction of his Siege Works. And now you need to make a choice. Do, do you lose the, your trap or do you lose... Yeah, he, he chooses the Trebuchet. And kills, kills his own Knight of Gondor. So it's annoying, uh, the ultimate offense here at the bottom side versus the ultimate defense at the castle of Eisen uh, Gondor. Plenty of trebuchet upon the, upon the wall. He destroyed one, two, three, four parts of the wall. What you could do in this situation is you basically get like four, five walk riders and then you watch on them and go in. And Vorks are actually quite resistant against the Firestone upgraded trebuchet. They don't get the chance to one-shot you or not even two-shot you. And you just heavily focus on structures. That's your plan. Faramir has been recruited. 
Faramir trying to fight against uh, the pikeman, but he can't. He will put him inside the tower because the pikeman would win the 1v1 fight without any doubt. And Gondor is still getting money though from the top side. Don't underestimate, underestimate that. He has the two level 2 farms around this outpost, two level 2 blacksmiths around this outpost. He's getting good amount of money. Uh, of course, not as much as Isengard, who has 30,000 in the bank. Gondor is still starving to death. And Gondor has still 150 command points to be filled. And he's trying to do that with getting some more knights and most importantly, some more trebuchet upon the field. Eagles have been picked from the spellbook. He is now eight power points and a quarter away from his AOD, as Isengard needs 14 for his Balrog. Remember, killing or losing doesn't matter for Isen. You get rewarded with power points either way, okay? But he wanna play it slow. He's now bringing the explosive mines. The explosive mine is going to disable the camp technology. Can he reach it? Because it's vulnerable against fire. If it gets connected with fire, it will always blow up. Oh, the knights are falling into the darkness here by trampling into the... I want to see this, actually. Oh my god, he destroyed it just, like, just in the last possible second. Oh, there was a good, uh, good reaction here. <laughs> you want to do this always, bro? Oof, what a fine hit. I mean, these traps are doing a phenomenal job here for... Oh, he almost got the chance to hit both. You can't heal the machines at the well, but you can heal them with your spellbook spell. The heal spell. He will get the chance to... I mean, it's... Like, Aizen is too scared of going in. Might be understandable. Because he doesn't want to lose all his army to all this massive trebuchet army. And three power points after the eagles, plus eight power points almost after the field of fires. The Vorks are trying to get some map. But the main focus is now at the outpost at the bottom side and at the castle from Gondor. Ganaf is level eight, by the way, getting two is two levels away from the war of power. And Faramir level almost four. Uh, Boromir is not being utilized and used um, as well as he could. He's all about to hit level 7. That would actually be a big buff for the infantry units and archers, for example. So, combos could be a very, very good choice here for Gondor. And then also for the Iron Ore upgrade, as you can see, the glow on his blacksmiths. So, he's going to get passively also a lot of money. And with the decent map control he has, he has, again, four farms outside and two outposts. I think he missed the Warm Tongue. On the army, yes, he missed the warm tongue on the knights as he again lost his ballista. Okay, so so what's the plan now? That's the big question, right? What's the plan? Gondor is scared to move out, which is understandable. Isengard is scared to go in, which also is understandable. I would be impatient in this. When I would be in this situation with Gondor or against Gondor, I would be impatient either way. Potentially would lose me the game, but I would. I'm not. I have not the patience level uh, to just sit there and wait for my opponent to make a move like this. Boom, boom. But he's gonna feed power points now. Okay, it's like three traps against two ballista. But the traps actually killed some of the units and found even more power points for Gondor. It's amazing. The knights will always win the 1v1 fight against the warrocks with the shields upgrade. And Gandalf also doesn't leave the castle. So what you can do eventually is you have like plenty of knights of Gondor, right? You can go for the main base again and try to farm power points. When you know or when you see your opponent is too scared to make a move, there is no need to wait in the base for this, you know? You have mobility. You can always bail and oh, he's going to be able to use the lightning sword. One of the warrocks will also go down. Did he use Warchant? Use Warchant here. He's gonna go in now as he saw Gandalf out of place. Um, and that's gonna be the fight we are looking for, boys. 
there comes the Grey Company, but what can they do against such reckless eight? The army is way too powerful, way too strong. As, Lord, as Boromir gets level 7, but he's alone, just like in the films. And there comes the commitment on the Lords. Lords will not go down as he will use the cripple to damage. He's 1 HP. Imagine Faramir being there right now. I think Gandalf didn't see that the cripple has been used. He's gonna miss the speechcraft. And the traps are still doing a phenomenal job. Now is the time for Gandalf to commit. Now is the time for him to do some crazy and make amazing shenanigans happen. He needs to know that... Boom! Oh my god, this Faramir is on a mission. Guys, this Faramir is on a mission, guys. Guys, this Faramir is on a mission. Oh my god, he got knocked down. Attack the guy! Oh my god. <laughs> this is so unfortunate. And he, he couldn't do it again. He couldn't show his quality again. Oh no. Did you guys see what happened? He wanted to use the warning arrow. He dropped the arrow from the shoulder. And he's like, I got this daddy, Denitor. <laughs> and then he got knocked down from the ballista. He couldn't get it off. Then he start, he even healed, and then he started out attacking the guy who was getting away with 1 HP, bro. That's so unfortunate, man. I don't know what to say. Does he have AOD? Almost. 1 in the quarter. 1 power point in the quarter. Boromir and Farami both dead. Condor has a lot of money, though, but he's not investing it. He's not using it. You can just easily go for uh, combos at this outpost. You have double leadership. Your opponent has no rain. History has been used. All about to hit level 9. 10 power points now. Now he has to use the AOD here. Otherwise he will be losing the base. He's going to use the AOD actually indeed. And that's going to give power points to... Watch the power points now. Isengard will get from losing all his heroes. Lourdes go down of a power point. And Saruman is going to be a big chooser. Losing Saruman is always going to be a huge rewarding for you. Like mentioned before, evil doesn't care about friend or foe. By the way, Ganov is level 9, basically level 9, but oh my god, just kill Saruman, how can you let him live? He's gonna use Palantir, oh Ganov, Ganov is gonna do the job. Saruman, your stuff is broken, just give him a left tap, all you need is one out attack. And actually not a, not a bad move to save the kill on Saruman uh, with your Ganov. This way you get actually surprisingly close to the... Hold on a second. Hold on a second. The payback. Balrog of Morgoth. 68,000 in the bank. 68,000 in the bank for Aizen. So he has the chance to lose his army over and over and over again. That's going to be a juice breath fire. Only four. You, can, you could hit five. But you need to move like directly to this location here and then use it from here. But it's totally fine for could be still enough. However, he's wasting, he wasted too much time. You needed to ignite while you are flying and stuff. He might not make it happen. Even though Balrog is capable of defeating or destroying the whole castle. That's definitely possible. But I think it won't hit this one. I th actually, he didn't hit this too. And Gondor will get the chance to rebuild. At this point, I would think about cancelling this too and then rebuying the castle because you have the money to rebuy the castle and when you rebuy the castle all your broken parts will be repaired anyway right it's better to cancel it and rebuy it uh, gondor by the way has been able to take down this outpost at the bottom side he already has nine power points in the bank he can go for the cloud break he can go for the rohirrim alliance he can go for um and basically these are his two options right cloud break would have been would of course been a good choice here and Isengard would have even more eco potential, right? He has the power points for the devastation, for example. And not that he needed, needs it. 62,000 in the bank. There comes the cloud break to stun the works uh, and to kill them here. And Gondor will be just able to recapture the settlement. Where is, where is Gandalf at? Gandalf died. How the heck did Gandalf die? Um, Loki, I want to rewatch the game to just see where Gandalf died. But Saruman and Lourdes are dead. How did your Gandalf die there? I don't get it. 
I just don't get it. Like, that would be the, the time of your life. Look at the beast. It's open. You have four or five knights of Gondor. You have uh, Rohirrim summon. You have so much potential with your Gandalf. And your Gandalf is super close to level 10. Trampling with the Rohirrim summon, but every combo is pikeman, crossbowman combo. And that's one of the reasons why your combos would have been good doing a phenomenal job here. This crossbowman, pikeman combination are only good against horses. They are not good against other combos because your frontline are pikemen, which are super vulnerable against combos, against fire damage. And you have Boro leadership too. And you put uh, Gandalf, Boro, and also Farah close to your combos. Farah gets a level and a bit, and he also unlocks his leadership. And you have all of a sudden triple leadership against a faction that doesn't have freezing rain. And you have plenty of summons too. You have traps behind your army, and Boro is running it down. Running it down, the, the horn won't stun the level 3 units, but Boromir is going to be able to survive at least for now. Sharku has been also recruited, but a level 1 Sharku against highly leveled Knights of Gondor is not going to be doing the job. And the, you can fight it too well here, no problem by the way. He's using the 4 Gondor ability, but only for himself. There comes the war chant, and Gandalf is going to be revived. And he's all about hit level 10, boys. He's all about to hit level 10. And level 10, Gandalf is unlocked. Alright, so he... What? Why did he... Why did Gondor leave the game? I don't get it. The guy got level 10. He has... Captured the outpost at the bottom. He has recaptured his castle. He has, you know, basically EOD twice because War of Power is basically like EOD. You can kill a whole army. He gets his Gandalf revived, uses Lightning Sword, and leaves the game as his Gandalf hits level 10. Questionable. Maybe his mother was like, Jimmy! Jimmy, it's time to go to sleep. Tomorrow is school. <laughs> GG, well played, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, you know what to do. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.